Um, yeah, thanks, Ralph, for the nice introduction. And um, yeah, it's my pleasure to, to present here. Um, thanks for inviting me. Um, okay, so let's get underway. So today I'm going to be talking about active matter under control. So before I start on the science, um, let me uh, just introduce the team I'm working on, uh, I'm working with in this, in this project. So this work has been done at University, uh, University of Luxembourg um, with Corral Prosmans, who's now at the Niels Bohr Institute, and um, with Etienne Fodor, who is the, um, uh, the lead in this project. So I think um, you may have recognized both of them. So I think Corral did um, a stint in Cambridge with Dan Frankel uh, some years ago, and Etienne um, was a Oppenheimer fellow, I think, um, working with Michael Cates. So you may, may see, uh, recognize their faces. Okay, so let's begin with the science. So first, what is active matter? Well, briefly, you can say active matter consists of individual particles that convert energy into work, resulting in remarkable collective effects. So a more everyday example, um, is, a, is a, a murmuration of starlings. So this is a, some beautiful photography by Soren Salker. So in this uh, phenomena, you have uh, birds uh, and they, they flock, so they, they um, um, collectively move as a, as a group um, without a leader. So that's the important thing. So it, there's no leader uh, in this system. Um, so active matter in, in biological systems scales, uh, many lamp scales, um, but active matter is also, uh, can also be um, synthetic, so man-made. Um, so for instance, I'm gonna show you an experiment of um, two-faced colloids. So one side is covered with a chemical whereupon um, illumination, um, a chemical reaction occurs on this side, uh, on one side of the particle, giving it a, a self-propulsion. Um, so if I start this, so when the light is turned on, you see that these uh, dense clusters form um, in, a, in a background of, of disordered um, gas-like particles. So you have regions of dense, so very, uh, dense clusters here. Um, and then when the light is switched off, uh, which eventually happens in this video, um, the system um, acts like a, a passive one and um, the particles undergo the ordinary Brownian motion. Um, so in, in this, from, from these two examples, you can see that um, you see phenomena that's, that's not uh, existing in passive matter. Um, but this opens the door to, um, to, to novel materials and devices. So if you can actually control the, the phenomena arising in active systems, um, you can then envisage um, novel machines, novel ma materials. So indeed, this is what um, people are already starting to do. Um, um, for instance, uh, a hot topic at the moment is, is active turbulence um, and active vortices, uh, and people are already uh, successfully controlling these phenomena. Um, as you can see here, some, some recent papers. Um, but what's, what's of interest um, in, in this talk and my work is, is thermodynamic control. Um, and actually the, the motivation there is to strike at the heart of, of the difference between active and, and passive matter. Um, because in active matter, um, there's a constant um, heat dissipation due to the individual um, particles converting energy into to work or motion. Um, so for instance, on the y-axis is just a, an illustration. You have the heat dissipated into the environment. On the x-axis, you have the, the protocol duration. So for the black curve, it's for a passive system. And you can see that um, for a passive system, the most thermodynamically efficient um, protocol duration is the longest one. So it's the, the quasi-static limit. Um, and of course, this is known. Um, but due to the, 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 the constant conversion of energy by active particles, um, there's a growing heat dissipation uh, for, for growing protocol duration. Um, so you can see that, um, so, so initially there's, there's a cost. So if you, if you try to have a very fast protocol, you have to give it a high initial drive 
um, and this dissipates heat. So you have a uh, cost for initial, uh, for, for fast protocols. Um, you can see in active system systems, a, a natural minimum um, arises. So um, the, the essential physics um, of this talk is really in this, um, in this illustration. And what I will do is just unravel the, the consequences of this growing dissipation um, for controlling active systems. So let's just um, uh, delve a bit deeper of, of, of where this, this growing dissipation comes from. So for a passive system, uh, if we consider overdamped um, uh, Langevin dynamics, so you have the uh, uh, velocity here, you have a conservative force, mu is a mobility, and you have some, some noise. So this is a, as a white noise. So this is um, ordinary, you know, we, we all know this. Um, and then if you, if you were to find the, the heat dissipated um, by the system, um, you would see that it um, unsurprisingly follows the first law of thermodynamics. So here you have the potential energy of the system and here you have, have the work. But for an active system, um, well, how can we make this active? Well, we can just add um, a self-proportion. So here's just VI is a self-proportion. So it's just a, a small amendment to the dynamics. And if we compute the heat dissipation here, um, what we find is that um, we have, you know, some of the terms that were there in the passive case, but we have this, this um, boundary term, which is proportional to um, the protocol duration. Um, and it depends on uh, the details of, of, of the self-proportion. And it's uh, uh, extensive in um, the number of particles. So there's also this um, term here, um, which uh, will play an important role in, in what's to come. So, okay, this is just um, the exact heat, heat dissipation for an active system that I showed you on the, on the last slide. Um, but so uh, what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll take a, an assumption of, of weak um, slash slow driving um, and okay, that there's the cost of generality. So I can only look at uh, um, you know, weak protocols. Um, but given this, if you accept this, this assumption, um, then you can um, utilize the systematic um, theories of response. Um, and that's what I'll do in, in, this, in this talk. So if you do this, um, and I'll show you some, some more details in, in later slides, um, you get this um, generic form of the heat dissipation. So you still have this term that's proportional to the protocol duration, um, and you have this, this boundary term, which is here, and I'll um, specify what these uh, objects are. Um, and importantly, you have this kind of action term uh, and then of course the integrand is, is a Lagrangian. Um, so this is, so the term in blue is what we, we will optimize um, to optimize the, the heat dissipation. So this, this Lagrangian um, has a, a familiar form which we can make use of in, in the next slide. But of course, um, we sh as physicists, we should be at home here because we have a sort of kinetic term and a, and a potential term. Where, where the mass is really this sigma, uh, sorry, psi sigma here. And uh, the, the velocity squared is just the protocol speed squared. So of course, when we have a Lagrangian and uh, we want to optimize um, things, we can use the staple of calculus of variations, um, the Euler-Lagrange uh, equations. So for a passive system, um, if you massage, if you apply the Euler-Lagrange uh, machinery, you get uh, an uh, uh, equation like this. So it's like a, a nonlinear um, oscillator equation, if you like. Um, but actually, this is this is just the um, uh, approach from from Sivak and Crooks, so, so David Sivak and Gavin Crooks, who um, are really uh, um, yeah, made waves in, in, the, in, in, in the, the theories of control by introducing this thermodynamic geometry approach. So in their theories, this, this, this psi would, would be the kind of thermodynamic metric 
um, kind of the friction, friction metric. But in the case for an active system, you get a similar like a similar equation, um, but you have this term here, which uh, um, depends on the activity. So this V um, is actually, uh, so if I go back, this V actually arises from, from, from this guy here. So you can see how it kind of um, encompasses um, the framework of Stevak and Crux. Um, so we have a, a more general form here. So as I said before, the Lagrangian is a is in a familiar form. Um, it only depends on the, the generalized velocity and the generalized position. Um, so you can say this Lagrangian is homogeneous. Basically, it's not explicitly dependent on t. So you can actually um, uh, pull out a constant of motion, um, which is just the Hamiltonian, which is just the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And then once you have this, um, you can get the protocol speed and a first integral of motion. So this first integral of motion, um, with this, you can, you can get the, the protocols. So this is the very important uh, equation for the framework. Okay. So, um, so let me go back. So here I introduced these quantities um, and it's good, good practice to actually tell you uh, well, what they are. Um, so just for this talk, I'll just call them the Greeks. Um, so these five uh, quantities here that um, arise in, in the heat. Um, and you can see that they, um, some of them depend on, on, on the response. So this is a, uh, a linear response. The one just means it's first order response. Um, this is of the potential energy. And um, this is just taking uh, the time difference. So you can see some depend on the linear response, um, but one depends on the linear response and the second order response. So um, the second order response comes about, basically I'm, I'm expanding terms in the heat um, to order uh, one over TP. Um, and this has to be there mathematically to, to have all terms uh, of one over TP in the heat dissipation. Um, and okay, we have this V here, uh, which I mentioned before. So this is like the potential of the Lagrangian. So actually if you were to kill um, the self proportion, so basically kill all terms that have a v, VI in them, these terms, um, it simplifies greatly and you actually kill off uh, two objects and you're left with these. So again, this is actually, um, you can massage it into um, the framework uh, of Sivak and Crux. So really um, this framework um, encompasses uh, the passive uh, control framework that's already known in the literature. Um, so yeah, once you know once you know the Greeks, um, you know everything, and you can um, perform your uh, you can uh, derive your protocols. So just to uh, uh, let you know where the, yeah where the responses come in, well just from the from definitions, if we expand um, some observable x. Um, around a, a steady state. So it's a, it could be a, a non-equilibrium steady state that's far from equilibrium. Um, so you get a, a zero order term and you have this, this term that depends on uh, the linear response, which is just uh, by definition this. And you have a term that's uh, the second order term, which uh, depends on the uh, second order response, which is by definition here. And um, how we actually obtain uh, expressions for the response, well, we use a, a path integral approach. Um, so that basically means if you, um, you, you take a probability for a, for a certain trajectory um, where uh, eta could be say uh, just a, the noise, so um, a particular uh, a noise trajectory in the system. And here you have uh, N is just a, a normalization factor uh, basically a sum of all, all histories, and S is, a, is an action. Um, and of course, I've taken KBT to be one. 
Um, and for instance, uh, an average of an observable here is just uh, is just this, right? Uh, which is the same form as well if, if we do an average in uh, normal statistical mechanics. So for for the overdamped uh, large event dynamics, um, the action we can we can choose is is the on-circle mat clock one, uh, which just has this form. And uh, what we need to do then is just um, perturb this action. Um, to the appropriate order. And then um, we apply the definition of the response. So we're taking um, functional derivatives of, of these terms. Um, so in the most general form, the response functions look like this. So you have here the definition and you have uh, the observable, um, and then you have a functional derivative uh, of the action. So these um, double, say you know, double Langle, double Wrangle, it's just um, it's just a connected correlation function. So you can think of it as like the, the autocorrelation function. You basically take away um, if it was a two-point correlation function, you do the two-point correlation function minus um, the product of the averages. And the nonlinear non response is you can do the same uh, massaging. Um, and you get this this form here. Um, we've actually have um, precise uh, equations for for the systems that I'll show you later. So again, let's just go back to stuff we know. So if we again just remind you of the um, dynamics here, so yeah, we've just added the self proportion uh, to make it active. So, they, so for example, the, the linear response um, for, for overdone larger in dynamics um, looks like this. So you have this this term here, which is uh, you know reminiscence of the of the Kuba relation, so the fluctuation dissipation theorem. But we have this extra term um, that comes about due to the activity, um, and it is dependent on the the dynamics. Um, so this so this is uh, very interesting work. So if, so this form agrees, well, it's, it's consistent with um, so the, the equations from Mays and Bazdu uh, and so on. But when you kill um, the activity and you symmetrize, so you take, uh, you flip uh, the minus sign in the time and you take, a, take this response away from here, um, you just get the, the fluctuation dissipation. So you're back to you know, familiar ground there. So, um, so we built a framework, and of course, it's good to to test this framework. Um, and um, kind of the, the the a good system to to do this um, analytically is is a is a particle in a trap. Um, and why you can do this analytically because you have uh, a linear dynamics. So the potential is just a harmonic well, uh, where the the control parameter of interest is just the the trap strip. Here we choose um, the active uh, proportion to, to be an ornstein ullenbeck process, uh, whereby the, uh, uh, the correlations have an exponential form here. So actually, um, uh, you, can, you can write down explicitly uh, close expressions for the Greeks. Um, and I'm showing you, we don't have to go through each term, but I'm just showing that, that it can be done. Um, and then this is then just the, the problem solved. So you can get closed form expressions for the Greeks here. Um, and basically you just need to know uh, Ito's lemma and, and Wick's theorem in order to, to get these, these equations. So again, so in the top left, it's just the, the illustration I showed you in the last slide. Um, B is the, the dynamical phase portrait. So on the wax, this is the um, protocol speed against uh, the protocol value, so position. Um, so blue is um, fast protocols and red is slow protocols. So um, again, so for slow protocols, you have the um, a maximum value of the slope, and then it uh, slows down towards the end. Um, and this is uh, mirrored here in the, um, in the protocol. So you have your protocol value against time um, normalized by the protocol duration just so we can compare 
fast and slow protocols on the same, same plot. So for fast protocols, indeed, you have uh, the slope uh, gets larger uh, as you get towards the end of the protocol, which is um, um, mirrored here. And uh, for slow protocols, you have a maximum value, say around here, so the slope is at its highest, and then it slows down. Um, so what's interest here is that if you were to, to do this for a passive system, they would all collapse onto the same curve. But in an active system, um, you have different, um, uh, you have different uh, curves for different protocol durations. So we actually don't fall onto a single master curve here. That's, that's a really uh, a striking point here. Um, and of course we have to, at the end of the day, compare the, the values of the heat around the minimum and check uh, against the exact heat dissipation. Um, and indeed it actually ag agrees uh, excellently in this, in this region. Um, and this thing here in the, in the corner is just um, in order to, to get the protocols, you can, so there, there was this um, first integral of motion. Let me just go back to show you what it was. So, so this guy. Um, so it's quite a, a, a tough uh, elliptic integral because you have this existence of this V here. And doing numerics in Mathematica is never a good idea. So I recommend this, um, this um, arb arbitrary ball arithmetic package, which allows you to be uh, very precise. And the only limiting factor is, is the RAM in your computer. Um, so as uh, the previous speaker was talking about, uh, you know, error, then errors come in finite precision, but here you, uh, you can get to arbitrary precision, which is very useful. So of course we, we, we've tested the, the framework for, for a simple model, um, but there's actually, uh, what's, what's of interest is, is, is many body systems, right? So can we uh, do the same for, for, for many body systems? Um, so just, just to specify a model, here we have uh, many body um, dynamics, so this is for particle I, uh, where you can have the self-proportion just take, take this form. Uh, which is fine. Um, and in this model, we're only gonna give uh, the disks um, excluded volume interactions. Um, this is just a, a soft core uh, potential here. So the important quantity alpha is the control parameter still, and, and this is the size of the particles. So just to give you um, um, a taste of the phenomenology arising in the model. So in the video, it starts from a homogeneous uh, uh, state, and then as time goes on, you have these uh, dense um, clusters. So this is a reminiscence of the, the first video I showed you on um, phase separating colloids. Um, so when we uh, think of many body active systems, um, sometimes uh, the systems uh, demonstrate uh, memory effects. Um, so yeah, we're going to probe this, but yeah, first, let me show you that, um, if you were to, uh, change the particle size, if you increase it so on the left, I'm going from the disorder to the motility induced phase separated state. So I'm increasing the particle size and then clusters start to form. And on the right, um, I go from the phase separated state to a disorder state by, by reducing the particle size. But really, uh, what I'm doing is just reducing the pack infraction. So here, um, so the point of this slide is that the system um, exhibits a hysteresis. So on the, the y-axis, this is just the um, uh, potential. So I showed you a Lagrangian and had a, a V in it. This is just that V. Um, and on the bottom here, we have the, um, the particle size. So as I go from for, for small particle size, when I'm in a disordered region and I increase, okay, there'll be some, at some point I will um, jump to uh, a MIPS uh, because I mean, there's a, there's a phase transition obviously. Um, and again, if I uh, reduce the particle size, um, I go from MIPS to, to a disorder system. So um, this is quite important because it means that um, protocols that take me from, from one 
one point in the phase diagram to here. Um, it really depends on, on where you start because the, the system uh, has memory. So one has to keep this in mind when, when controlling many body systems. Um, so what we've also done is um, we've generalized our framework to discrete state systems. So before I showed you uh, how the framework works with, with over damp larger in dynamics, so it's a continuous state system, but it can also work for discrete states. So we can, we can describe the dynamics of a discrete state system with the uh, master equation can be written in this form where Kij is just the rates minus the, the escape rate. So uh, I and J are, are states, discrete states. Um, and we are actually interested in um, a thermodynamically consistent model. Uh, you know, we're interested in the thermodynamics, so we have to make sure there's thermodynamic consistency built in. Um, and you can do this quite, quite easily in a discrete state system by ensuring the rates are of a Arrhenius form, um, which is just this form. So here, epsilon ig is, is, is the kind of active ingredient. Um, and when you, so this is the, the exact heat dissipation and you have, uh, so if, if you kill the blue term, you have the first law of thermodynamics again. Um, and this blue term is basically, um, uh, yeah, it can be, can be written like this. So the important point about, uh, about generalizing to discrete state systems is that the, our framework doesn't really change, right? We can still write the heat dissipation uh, in this way. Uh, we have a boundary term that looks very familiar to the, other, to the other boundary term for continuous state systems. And you have the all important Lagrangian, um, which has again, the familiar form, uh, familiar form. Um, just to show you what the, the Greeks look like, um, they're very, very similar to the continuous state system. Um, you have a, a side depending on the linear response and, and the second order response. And if you kill the epsilon, so this, this active ingredient in the, in the uh, exponent in our Arrhenius rate, um, well, you have these two die off and you're, you're back to, to a passive system. Um, so to conclude, um, we've built a novel and systematic framework to control systems far from equilibrium. Um, uh, doing this uh, ma mathematically, uh, uh, well, to doing this correctly, uh, you, you actually need nonlinear response, um, which is interesting because um, nonlinear response in, in, in non-equilibrium systems, they, they have signatures of the dynamics, right? Um, unlike passive control, protocols in active control do not collapse onto a single master curve. Um, so our framework readily accounts for discrete states, motivating thermodynamically consistent models of active matter. And our resulting protocols can be used as a seed slash testing ground for machine learning frameworks that go beyond slow driving. So if you were to take away any image in your brain from this talk, it would be this one, uh, which contains basically all the essential physics. Um, thank you for listening and yeah, happy to take questions.